Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. We come before your throne of grace, Lord, with thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving of yourself on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. We thank you for becoming sin for us so that in you we might become the righteousness of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that grace and truth came through you. And we thank you for the precious lessons you taught us while you were here on earth. Father, we praise you for the wonderful plan of mercy, grace, and power that you have given to mankind. Through your loving Son, Jesus, we praise you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image and that you have given us power over all the power of the enemy. We praise you that through Jesus Christ, you have given us everything that pertains to life and godliness and your great and precious promises, that through them we might partake in your divine nature. And Father, that was your plan from the Garden of Eden, when you gave us dominion over everything that your hands have made. We praise you that you have seen it fitting, Lord, to put this your goodness in vessels of clay such as ourselves. And we thank you most of all, dear Father, that no plan of yours can be thwarted. We thank you, Father, for everyone that is partaking in this devotion and for those whom it will reach. Father, we are taught in your word to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly but that we should come boldly before your throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Because how will you not speedily, also along with Jesus, graciously give us all things? Now, Father, we ask you to look upon what the enemy is attempting to do in the earth by the propagation of sickness and death, a sickness that attacks even the lives of those committed to providing care to the afflicted and the lives of the loved ones in their own households. Father, the enemy is trying to inflict fear, 
havoc and death. But your Holy Spirit and your church, the body of Christ, are still here in the earth. And Father, therefore, this attempt by the enemy shall falter and cease. Father, we take our stand as the righteousness of God in Christ. And we declare with the authority given us to use the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of his name here and now, that this plan of the enemy is now brought to an end. Your word says, Father, that one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand. Therefore, we join our faith with others, declaring a victorious outcome over this global crisis, and we say enough. We command the enemy to cease this attack. Father, your word says that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. We ask in the name of Jesus that multiple effective alternative cures, treatments, and vaccines be discovered, and that your angels be loose now, Father, to quicken the procurement of ideas and methods that will hasten the remission of this disease. We pray for leaders here in Barbados and across the world to act in wisdom and integrity in deciding how to implement the appropriate methods that will bring this crisis to an end. Father, your word is established in the heavens, and we establish your word here upon this earth. We stand upon your word that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to your eternal purpose that you accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, we thank you that you have heard this prayer and you have granted more than we can ask or think according to your power that is at work in us. May your answer, Father, be to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, for it is in his name that we pray and declare these things with thanksgiving. Amen.
Dutch Chambers from the islands of Trinidad and Tobago, and I am a commissioned lay pastor working in the James Street Spicetown circuit. It has not always been easy being away from my family and my loved ones, and what is happening in the last few weeks, not being able to be a part of regular church services and church life, and also not really knowing what the future has. These things have been on my heart and may have made things quite challenging. But despite all of that, God has given me his comfort in his word and in his presence. He assures me that all is well because he is in control. I'm still able to talk with my family and friends on the internet. Even though regular church is not open, we are still meeting on Zoom. And persons who were not able to be a part of prayer meeting and Bible study are now able to. And that with him here, my life and all our lives are safe because he is in control. And I encourage us to keep holding on to God because he is the author and the finisher of our faith and our lives. Amen. Greetings everyone. My name is Gambo Balsum. I'm a Global Mission Fellow of the United Methodist Church and I'm serving here in the James Street Spiceton circuit as a youth worker and I'm from Nigeria. This very period has been very difficult for me, staying away from my family, friends, and my home community. But in all this, God has been faithful to me. He has comforted me in different ways through his own words in my times of meditation and prayers. And he has surrounded me with a loving and caring church community that has always called and sent me words of encouragement. And I'm also amazed to see how I have grown in social and spiritual holiness. So I give all the glory to God for his faithfulness, love and protection over me. And special thanks to my family, friends and the church community in Barbados and also to the young people of the Methodist Church. I pray that God will continue to bless you as you have been blessing me. So remain blessed. My name is Sari. I am a global mission fellow from Cambodia serving in Barbados. I'm working with children and youth as a youth workers. I have been for five months already. I feel God called and works through me. I had experience as I'm away from home and family, especially during this COVID-19 season. I miss my families and my beloved one at home. But God still comfort me through my silent time fellowship with God and meditation, fellowship with sister, and also church member called checking on me, encouraging. Lastly, I much appreciate and thankful for people surrounding me and always supported and keep praying for me. So may our Lord and our God Jesus Christ bless to our soul. Amen. I'm James Moni Lamina, a missionary from Global Ministry serving with the Methodist Church in St. Lucia as a young adult empowerment and youth work facilitator. I just want to take a moment to share with you how God has been at work in my life in the midst of the crisis. Firstly, I would say God has been faithful um, in so many ways. Every morning I wake up in good health and sound mind, and He has continued to provide my every need. And most importantly, I continue to serve the young people and uh, the church, regardless of the challenges that we continue to face because of the restrictions in place in our respective countries. Precisely, um, we still continue to hold our youth sessions, now on Zoom meeting, and most recently, uh, I've been privileged to work alongside the technical team to live stream Sunday worship services. All of these have been made possible because of the support of the superintendent minister, Reverend Seth, the entire congregation here in St. Lucia, and the staff at Global Ministries. So I just want to say a big thank you to them for all the support that they've rendered. And also, I want to encourage each and every one of us to continue to um, observe the precautionary measures so that we can um, continue to be safe, regardless of what happens. Hello, everyone. My name is Lee Kanchan David. I'm a Global Mission Follow, serving the Jim Street Methodist Church of Barbados. I am from China. For this moment, I feel I'm okay, 
Even kids growing up, more country are affected, but I am not afraid. I know that the Lord our God He is in charge of everything, because He is the King of King, Lord and Lords. Although I am not with my family now, I sense the Lord that they are safety. They have drawn the peace from our Lord. I am grateful for this. For me, I often talk to them because I miss them so much. For China, it has basically returned to normal, but the church has not yet reopened. But in God's time, it will. I hope we pray together and believe that the Lord will continue be with us and protect us. May the God be with you. Amen. I'm Wing Om Renta, and I'm 8,830 miles away from home. And honestly, it hasn't been easy for me, especially during this time. It hasn't been easy for any of us. Things do get overwhelming sometimes, but God is good. Surprisingly, God has been working in my life right now more than He's ever been. It's just He and I alone during this time. He is mending parts of me that needs to be mended. A few months ago, I planned to fly to New York to attend a wedding, but I did not get visa. So I was disappointed at that time because things didn't turn out the way I wanted to. Later, I got news that all the people who attended the wedding got coronavirus. And I realized, oh, if God didn't intervene and stopped me from going, I can't imagine what would have happened to me. God's protection has always been with me ever since the day I flew out from my country. All my life, I have believed that I was not creative enough to work with young people but it's amazing how God is putting all these um, fascinating, innovative ideas in my head. Surely God will give you what you like if you ask Him. It's a wonderful experience to witness how God works in our life in times and ways that we least expect. When God calls us to do something, He will help and equip us to do that. So don't be afraid and trust Him. God bless you. Yeah.
us pray. Gracious God, whose plan is to make all things new in and through Christ, we thank you for how you are leading us by your Spirit, enabling us to discover new ways of fellowship and service. May your name be glorified in all that we do, and may you give us ears and eyes to discern you as you lead us forward, and strangely warmed hearts to trust and obey you. In Jesus' name, Amen. For our reflection, our text is Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19a. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Isaiah 43, verse 19a. Sisters and brothers, God is about to do something new in the Methodist Church. And as a result, something new in your life, so that through you and your church, something new would be done in your land. New times are coming for our church, and we better be ready for that. The prophet Isaiah, speaking from a situation of Babylonian captivity, prophesied to the exiled people of God that the time had come for something new in their lives. Life cannot and will not go on in the same way year after year with them doing the same things over and over indefinitely. A break must come. And indeed, according to Isaiah, that break has come. It is a time in which they will be taken out of what they had grown comfortable with and they will journey through a wilderness land back to the place God always wanted them to be. But that place to which they are going, although it is what God wants for them, although it is really their homeland from which they were taken, nonetheless to them, it is a strange land, requiring them to embark upon new tasks and shoulder new responsibilities, some of which could look quite dangerous. How did the people reach in that situation? Due to their disregard of their purpose and mission, the Jewish people of God had become what they were not created to be. Instead of being a light to the nations, they had become, like others, part of the darkness in the world. They cheated, exploited, oppressed, and bullied one another, especially the poor and weak amongst them. That was not the way God wanted his people to live. They have been called to be a light to the world so the world could come to know God, trust God, and by so doing, live at peace with each other. But by not being who they were supposed to be, the people of God suffered humiliating defeat at the hands of their Babylonian enemies. Friends, this tells us that when we fail to be who we are supposed to be, we are always met with defeat in one way or another. Thus, the Jerusalem temple was desecrated and destroyed by the Babylonians, and the best people were shamefully transported into Babylon. It seemed as if God had abandoned them for all times, and that they were finished forever as a nation and people. All the covenantal promises of God look as if they had to be forgotten dreams. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. This psalmic lament captures the despairing depth of despair to which the people had sunk. To merely survive, 
they had to get accustomed to the norm of life in Babylon. And indeed, they had gotten accustomed to it. They were surviving physically and economically, but they were not being the people God wanted them to be. But God had not abandoned his plan. Friends, God never abandons his plan. God did not abandon his plan for Israel. And God has not abandoned his plan for your church. And he has not and will not abandon his plan for your life. God was still determined to use unholy Israel in his holy plan of salvation. But he first had to save them. He had to let them experience a new exodus. He had to bring them back to their homeland where they belonged so they could be molded and fashioned in a new way. To achieve that, God did a most strange thing. God used an unholy pagan man of war, King Cyrus of Persia, to break the power and bondage of Babylon and take his people out and return them to their homeland. Interestingly, when King Cyrus started to put nations to the sword, trampling down resistance as laughable walls of straw. This ruthless military campaign brought fear and trembling in the hearts of the Jewish exiles. They thought that what the Babylonians did not achieve in utterly wiping them out, this vicious man of war will certainly achieve in a most efficient manner. But friends, Things are not always the way they seem. Surprise, surprise. It was that very dangerous situation, that life-threatening crisis that became the gateway to a new life for them, a new life of forgiveness and freedom so they could be the people God designed and called them to be. Behold, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Friends, I do not know the situation of your local church. Neither do I know the state of your personal life. But you know, there are times when we get so familiar with doing the same things over and over that they become empty rituals losing meaning for us. The way in which we once delighted ourselves in the Lord might no longer bring such delight. Things could become laborious and we could find ourselves stuck, wanting to step out and step away from active church life and be carefree, just like any other member of the secular crowd enjoying life as it comes. The excitement we once had as we reach out to touch the lives of others in a meaningful and uplifting way might no longer be that exciting. The way we gave ourselves to prayer, to worship, to reading and studying the word of God, ah, that time might seem so far away and God also distant. We might have been seeing our church gradually dwindle in numbers and aging with seemingly no prospect of growth and an infusion of new, young, energetic blood. And on top of that, the COVID-19 pandemic has come as a blow to finish us off since it has made customary meetings and fellowship impossible. But before we despair, let us, like exile Israel of old, hear and believe the word of God for today. Behold, I am about to do a new thing. God does not abandon his plan. 
but God always finds new ways to move his plan forward. Friends, Almighty God is still very committed to bring in his new creation in Christ to its glorious destiny. Therefore, this God is calling ordinary men and women like you and I, both young and not so young, to prepare ourselves now for the post-COVID-19 time that is coming. Prepare ourselves through deep prayer and meditative study of scripture. Prepare ourselves for when our church comes out of its exile-like lockdown. Prepare ourselves for there will be need for ordinary, spirit-led lay leaders on the local and community level as never before. Prepare ourselves. Friends, dare I say that you are being called by God to be a leader to whom people would look. The new situation that will emerge from this crisis will mean that it cannot be business as usual. There will be need for leaders who can gather small groups of people together as the first century Christians and the 18th century Methodists did, as our Caribbean four parents did when Methodism came to the Caribbean. Like exile Israel, it will be a return to the place and the way of life that is truly our Methodist heritage, gathering people in many small groupings, wherever it can be done, to share a life-changing word with them, gathering them to say a prayer with them and to teach them how to pray, to comfort the elderly, to mentor the children and youth. This crisis, friends, will lead to a time of opportunity as never before, because God is about to do a new thing for the sake of his kingdom. Can you not sense it? Would you not prayerfully prepare and get on board? May God open our ears and eyes to the new thing he's about to do. And in this time, and immediately following, may his name be glorified. May God bless you all. Amen.
Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope someday, sometime, we will meet again. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit constantly renew us and constantly draw us closer to him and be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.